So we just want to get the pronunciation correctly. It's jug me. That's right. Okay. Actually, if you want to get like all in there, it's the emphasis on the second syllable. And instead of Andrew, it would be Andrew. So it's like jug me. Jug me. Yeah. Okay. That's like, that's like, now you got it. You just kill it. Jug me. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It means friend to the world. Oh, well, we sir. Yeah, when I hear him, like, shh. Jug literally means world. Meet means friend. That's perfect. World friend. Can you tell me what's your favorite song right now? I have a couple of criteria now for music. So I wanted to obviously got to sound good, but I also wanted to have a good meaning. There's lots of stuff out there that's catchy, but then like the meaning is not really there. And the song is Nothing Last. And the song is about this idea the material things are not really of substance. And it's very vibey, like the sound of it is very catchy, but it, the chorus sticks with you and the chorus is like Nothing Last, basically. So it kind of realigns like what matters in life. So not to get super philosophical, but yeah, I like that song a lot. I've been listening to Beyonce's Cowboy Carter. Uh, I'm really vibing with that because I think the story behind it's really cool that she really explored the African-American experience with Western music and really looked at that genre and the influence of African-American singers and uh, other Canadian artists. I'm, I'm, I'm into right now is Dominic Chilzeme. Give me She is an uh, incredible singer, born to be on stage, I feel like, and is killing it, has beautiful music, is Haitian descent, and uh, I met her in real life too, which is kind of cool, and I think her music's really dope. Well, well, yeah. Thank you, you answered that but <laughs> very well. Um, I want to talk a little bit about you right now. Yeah. Uh, can you actually tell me what inspired you to, to get into politics? A simple answer, my brother, my kid brother who like, I felt like I raised as a father almost because he lived with me while I was in university and he was in high school. So I really I was kind of like a father figure to it and uh, I'm really proud of him as well. And we're really close. But the interesting thing about age gap is when you're younger, it feels like a big deal. Like 15 and 20 is a big deal. But then when you're 30 and 35, less of a big deal. So as we got older, that gap diminished. And in a lot of ways, he kind of guided me into this world and encouraged me and really pushed me, in some ways guilt tripped me to get into politics. Um, but so he's a person. And then I would say my mom and my dad both instilled in me these ideas about like social responsibility, taking care of the people around you, like civic responsibility, and this philosophy that we're all one, which really informs what I do. Mm -hmm. I totally understand that my brother is 16 years older than me. So I totally understand from the younger brother perspective what it's like to, yeah. to have that brother who is who's part raising you for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's way even more intense. Yeah. 16 years, yeah. Here's yeah. the big difference. Yeah. Yeah. In my case, it's like five years, but yeah. 16 it's, is legit. Like, <laughs> yeah. could almost be B years. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, very close. <laughs> um, can you tell me how it all began, politics for you? It's where, where, what yeah. was your entry point? Uh, I started 2011. And it started with basically my brother and a really good friend that both kind of took a tag team approach. One was very complimentary, saying that I should get into politics because I can make a big, I can make a big difference. I could, I could offer something that I'm worth. And my brother kind of guilting me, saying, you know, it, our mom always said it's not enough to just survive. You have to thrive, and thriving means giving back to the people around you. And that it's not enough to just have my own career, but I should be finding ways to contribute more. I went right for running in the federal election in 2011 under Jack Lee, and, and I ran as an MP. Okay. Oh, your mom sounds like she was a very important, powerful, and influential woman. Oh, yeah. Some good, good, good morals. She raised some good sons. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Um, talk about your, your upbringing and, and, and your faith. How has that influenced your work, and has it ever you know, acted as a barrier in, mm. in, in, in your career? Uh, I wouldn't say a barrier. It's certainly a big part of who I am. And the thing is, I, I always, I frame it through my mom, because my mom taught me really, or introduced me to spirituality. And the fundamental belief that she taught me was this idea that we're all one. Yeah. And the idea of, of us being one is spiritually like one of my guiding principles. It is politically one of my foundational beliefs. It really is something that captures the work that I try to do. And, and to give you an idea of what that means, like to, that we're all one. So my mom would literally say, if we were volunteering somewhere, doing some work for the community, 
And if someone was, was struggling or not doing so well, she would teach me that that person was me. Like, that was actually me or that was her. And that caring for that person was like caring for myself or caring for my mom. And really believing that, that, that the people around us are not just connected to us, but we are those people. And that really creates a different way to look at the world. Like if you truly believe that we are one, then you really are motivated to resist injustice that's happening to someone around you because that's happening to you. To really feel that internal, to internalize that injustice and say, like it's not just someone else out there that's struggling, I'm also struggling. And so that was a really big part of what she taught me and that is a very foundational part of the Sikh spirituality. It's like the first word written in the guiding spiritual text, which, which lays out this idea. And the first phrase is the idea that we're all one, and it is repeated again and again throughout. So it is something really guiding for me. And it really helps to deal with, even if someone disagrees with me, I still believe that we're one, so I have to support them and I have to find a way to, to, to make sure they feel included, even if they have a different belief. I mean, I could talk to you forever about this. It sounds very, very wholesome, very inspiring. Um, but I, I want to just pivot quickly to the Bell Lecture that you're sure. upcoming for, for FPA. Yeah. Um, I want to hear what's your elevator pitch, right? <laughs> Why should people come to listen to, uh, to listen to you speak at the Bell Lecture? Well, it's really, so I'm going to tap into this concept of Jardikala, the idea of rising spirits. So if you've ever felt a bit down and out and felt like a little hopeless, like things are getting worse and worse, and you needed a little bit of hope, Jardikala literally is not just hopefulness, it's almost defined optimism. It's like in the face of hopeless odds, where you should feel like there's no way forward, you tap into an optimism that, that laughs at almost the impossibility of trying to make things better, that that is so resilient that it is unfazed by the odds. So that's kind of the spirit that I wanna, I wanna tap into, this resilient and defiant optimism, and also a vision for what a better world can be. Like how could we build a better world that is focused on people, on this idea that we're all one and we should look out for one another and we take better care of one another. What type of world could we build if that's truly our guiding principle? And the power of government that's making decisions purely and solely in the interest of everyday people to make life better for everyday folks. That's really what, what it's gonna to try to capture. Yeah. And it's happening just down the street from here at the uh, Dominion Chambers uh, Chamber and hosted by Crowd University Faculty of Public Affairs. Now, when that's over and the lights go down, what is it that you really want member from the audience to walk away with? I want them to know in their heart to believe that there is hope for the future, that I want them to feel that we are better off if we take care of each other. For too long, the feeling of unfairness that people have, it is true. And it's because of a rigged system. For too long, the system that we're in, whether we look at the housing market, we look at the environment, we look at the cost of tuition, all these things are rigged against everyday people. So that if you've got lots of wealth, life is, is great. But if you are everyday working class, low income, struggling, just even a regular person who's got, parents got a decent job but are just trying to get by, it always feels like the deck is stacked against you. I want folks to know that that is true, to understand that I see you and I hear you, it is true. But that we can change that, that we have the power to change that. I want people to walk away with the hope that yeah, there is an incredible vision of how we can make things better. I could afford a home. I could have a good job that pays me enough to live a good life, that I don't have to live in constant worry about being able to afford my groceries, that a better world is possible where you can get healthcare when you need it. You can have that extra time with your friends or family or to be able to have the special treats when you go to the grocery store or go on a vacation, that these things are all achievable and possible and that, that that is the way we should be living. And I want people to walk away with this belief that yes, we can make it happen, and here is a vision for how we can achieve it. I listen to you speak, I can tell that you're someone who really cares about people. Mm. Um, I respect that. I think we need more of that uh, in the world for, for sure. Um, but just from looking at your social media, looking at your, your platform, looking at your career, uh, I, I do my research and, and you've always been a big advocate for, for young people. Mm. Where does that come from? Whoosh. 
uh, I appreciate the power the young people have and not just their potential, but their power right now. And I feel like if you look at history, all the biggest social movements, the most powerful forces for change when they've been grassroots have come from young people. There's a certain energy, a dynamism, a passion, a hopefulness that comes from youth. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you personally, I won my first election because of young people. They were the majority of the volunteers that made up our team. And when I mean young people, I mean uh, 18 and under. That was the bulk of our volunteer base. That was, that was, those were the people that came out, young folks. And they literally made history. When we won in that riding, it was the first time that an NDP had ever won in the history of that whole region. Not just that one riding, but the whole region. So history was made, and it was largely because of these young people that, that really believed in this, and they came out and knocked on doors. And people would say, well, you can't even vote. Well, what are you out here knocking on doors for? Like, we believe in this. We believe in what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And that was an example of the power that young people have. Well, just a small glimpse of it. Well, uh, last question for you, in 30 seconds or less, what's your message to young people so that they can come out and listen to you uh, at the end of the month? I would say I know that things are looking a little bleak. Sometimes when you're young, you're looking and saying, well, I'm not going to be able to afford a home. I don't see how I can get a good job. I don't see how the future is any brighter. In fact, it looks a little dimmer than it did for my parents. And really, that's the first time in a long time that the next generation feels like the future is less bright. I want to change that. I want you to walk away from this knowing that the future can be even brighter than ever, that there's so much that we can achieve and young people are going to be at the, the center of, of that type of change. So I want young people to feel empowered and hopeful leaving that meeting. Well, you left me feeling empowered and hopeful. So <laughs> that's one person down. All right, cool. I would love it. Word. Love it. Give me a reason. He has got, it looks like he's got a hang loose kind of gesture going on here. I think the hand broke though. It was just a little sad, but still uh, Jack Lee. This is a Métis sash, so it represents oh. indigenous communities. Um, they, it, it's like a very iconic symbol. Well, uh, literally a Canada flag. I guess, yeah, wooden version of a Canadian flag. Uh, painting of hockey. Yeah. It's hard to get more Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> hockey kid, one kid asking another kid to join in the, in the play. Uh, I got a flag of BC, and yeah, this is Canada. So you're home, uh, home riding? Home riding, nice. yeah, representing. I got uh, moccasins made by Indigenous Community First Nations. I'm going to ask about your daughter's hand. Uh, this is her hand and my hand on a photocopy machine. Wow. We just photocopied it. But it looks super, I felt like it looks super artistic and cute. She would come through the office regularly uh, when she was really young. I'd bring her here all the time. Mm -hmm. And now she's older, so she goes to daycare. Okay. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. So far. Oh, a lot. Uh, there's a paddle yeah. made by a Canadian paddle maker. So very canoes and paddling, very Canadian. So <laughs> very old. It's my homage to Canada. April is Sikh heritage. That's right. That's right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Very appropriate. <laughs> very on, on. Actually, I... Uh, randomly the bill the first bill in canada to like recognize Sikh heritage month i actually introduced that and got it passed in ontario no. and then it was brought uh canada wide oh, so uh, and you're you're at so, the days well yeah yeah, yeah. so it's very really, uh, fitting to do this okay ready i want to wish everybody for the month of april a very happy Sikh heritage month i hope you get a chance to experience or learn something about the Sikh culture in the Sikh community